Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I'm bringing you skiing with us. I can't actually believe that we're going skiing. We haven't been for years and we're all super, super excited to be spending half term up in the mountains. Now I do have a YouTube video, which I will link in the description below of what to pack for children when you're taking them skiing. So hopefully you find that useful. It's linked down in the description of this video. We have arrived. It's been quite an epic journey. Easy, really easy, but quite long. So it started at, well, I woke up at um, 2.48 this morning. I just, I woke up naturally, looked at the clock, and was like, oh, need to get up, need to get up. And um, look, we are here. So we got a plane. It was all really straightforward. And then we got two trains, a train from Geneva to I don't even know where. And then we got the mountain train up here to Zermatt. We've just done skis, boots, helmets, all that jazz. And actually we're just gonna sort of unpack and settle in. But um, it's so nice to be here. Finally, I never actually thought we were gonna get here. So a bit of a backstory. We booked our tickets to spend Christmas with my brother in Austria. We haven't skied for various reasons, mainly financial and COVID, for four years. Um, anyway, Simon transferred the flights to Switzerland, to Geneva, which was really clever of him. And we just thought, let's do it. Let's do it. It's our 15 year wedding anniversary in a few months. And we thought, um, do you know what? Let's just book it, do it. and. Yeah, it's so exciting to be here. Finally, the children are desperate to go and have a swim. So I think we're gonna go and do that and then just chill out and um, and relax. It's Coco's birthday too. So um, it's been a day of travel for her. She opened her presents last night before we left and she's packed some of them. So yes, anyway, <sighs> breathe. I'm gonna unpack, get organized, take them for a swim and I can't wait to hit the slopes tomorrow. I am feeling so much better. We've had a swim, I've washed my hair, I've put some makeup on, much more human. We are about to go um, for Coco's birthday supper. So I've just been to the supermarket and got me some wine, local wine. Is it local? Um, there were loads of vineyards as we were coming up on the train. So I'm gonna have a little swig of this. He's also, he knows me so well. Um, look, it's all of a mess. I haven't um, properly unpacked. He's bought me how many bars? Five oh, bars. Yeah. That will keep me going yeah. for a while. Anyway, I'm just I'm I'm actually not feeling too tired. I think I snoozed quite a bit on the aeroplane. And then it's been a really stress-free journey. Like the trains were amazing. We didn't have to rush. Everything was kind of fine. Size so organised the entire thing. So when we cancelled Austria, he transferred the flights to here and we weren't going to come. I was saying for weeks, in fact months, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, it's going to be too stressful. And then a friend really sweetly um, gave me a whole load of ski stuff for Coco because her daughter had, had outgrown it. And Coco said, can we go? So we could only come to Switzerland because the children haven't been vaccinated and in Switzerland you can come if the adults are fully vaccinated at the moment as it stands today. So we didn't really have much choice and he found Zermatt, we've never been before, and he found this hotel. It doesn't have a restaurant, we have breakfast here but then we've got to go out for our meals which is absolutely fine. Oh, apparently there's a big tea. There's lots of cake downstairs. That's why he was so long when he went to the supermarket. 
Have you, have you been having afternoon no, tea? I haven't, no, I haven't. No, no, no you were just eyeing it up for tomorrow. Anyway, size book the whole thing, organise the whole thing, the trains, the... He should be a travel agent. He's, it, it's gone so smoothly. I was quite apprehensive about the thought of two trains. I packed as lightly as I possibly could. I couldn't vlog that bit because, to be honest, I was carrying like three bags. or well, handbag, ski boots and a helmet, and my suitcase. And there was not a spare hand for any filming of that part. But I packed as lightly as I possibly could. We're actually away. How many nights are we away for? Nine. Nine. We've got a night in Geneva on the way home because our flight, uh, it would, it would, it didn't work with getting the trains back. So we've opted for a night in Geneva and less stress. So, um, yes. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy my wine and then we shall totter up the road for Coco's birthday supper. had a pretty good night's sleep. You can see the zoom in ski lifts up there. Look at the sun on there. Perfect blue skies. Is this fun? We had a really lovely ski this morning with um, the instructor and the whole family. This afternoon, Arch and I have gone off for an explore together. It was so much fun. He's such a good little skier. We're whizzing around the place. We've just done a black run twice, which um, actually was quite a nice black run. There were a couple of steep bits, but it wasn't too bad. Was it done? No, it was quite fun. Um, we found our ski legs again. I've got my knee brace on and I'm being pretty sensible. Um, well, as sensible as one can be. <laughs> Remember the gynecologist said to me um, a couple of weeks ago, he said, so I suppose you're not going to be skiing anymore with your knee. <laughs> so of, course I'm, of course I'm not going to stop skiing. What's the point in living if you um, wrap yourself up in cotton wool and don't go and do the things that you love? And I've been skiing since I was four. It's something that I am massively passionate about. I mean, look, just look behind me. The Matterhorn is there and it's just so much fun to sort of feel alive being up here and going and whizzing around the mountains with this one it's just yeah it's like a dream come true a really wonderful first day here. We um, all skied together this morning and then I skied with Arch this afternoon. The hair is not liking it, it's got really static and crazy. But we're about to go out for cheese fondue, which I am really, really looking forward to. It's one of my favourite things. It is a bit of a walk, so actually we're taking a taxi. I don't know if I mentioned uh, previously that Zermatt doesn't have any cars. So it's all electric kind of taxis and things and horse-drawn carriages. We've got to go, we've got to go. But um, <laughs> we've had a brilliant day. The snow's great and the weather has been wonderful so far. I think it's, I think it's turning, so we're going to make the most of it. Well, we can. Anyway, we must fly. But it is really lovely not having any cars. And the children have noticed already the lack of pollution here, which, um, which is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is our lovely instructor that has oh. been looking after <laughs> us for the last few days. So he's brought us out to this incredible spot. Thank you, you are too kind. Spot. Uh, this is the Mataron. From here, you can see almost everything. The Mataron in front of us, the glacier where you can ski in the summer. Over here. Yes, a little bit on the left. Yes, there. You can see the leaf from the glacier. And on the left, there is uh, Monte Rosa, another Look high uh, peak. That is uh, higher than the Matterhorn. Exactly. What's For it called? Monte Rosa? Monte Rosa, yes. It is an uh, Italian name. It's uh, 4,600. So over, oh, over the other side of Monte Rosa is Italy. Yeah, from yesterday. Do you know, remember? So we were in the pool and he came in to the pool area <laughs> so anyway then he disappeared and we went to the outer pool area because it's an indoor outdoor pool and we came back and he was in the pool and he was doing breaststroke like this and he looked at us and <laughs> and carried on and we stayed in the outdoor pool and then he kept on grinning like this and then when I got out I suddenly thought you're not wearing any swimming trunk. Huh? And so, <laughs> you're not wearing any swimming trunks. And I think that's why he's been grinning, because he's hoping that we might get out so that he can, I don't know, anyway. But the pool has all these wave machines and stuff. So what we were talking about is pressing all the buttons. It's like a massive, one massive jacuzzi with, you know, you swim against it and you get pushed away and all this. And we thought we'd turn the whole lot on when it's in there. <laughs> and see what happens <laughs> as he disappears. Anyway, it was hilarious. But there is, I mean, there was somebody in the sauna with that short time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all very, all very German. <laughs> you can see the sirens. Oh my gosh, I'm laughing so much. We've been, we've been hysterics and stuff. You can see that Simon isn't a fan of um, nudity in, in public places. from my ski helmet on my forehead. We've had an amazing day. We um, decided to make the most of the weather because I think it might be changing a little bit tomorrow. So we um, we all skied this morning with the instructor. Then we met, uh, we had lunch, and then, uh, I can't even talk about Gus. Archie and I skied this afternoon. And they're getting so good and so fast. It's not gonna be long before they are faster than me. Um, it was so much fun, lots of jumps, um, not so many jumps for me, I'm trying to be really sensible. It, it's just, it reminds me of when I was little skiing with my brother and we just had so much fun together, just whizzing around the mountains. Anyway, we ended up at the far, far, far end of town and this really nice guy told us sort of where to go and how to get down because we met him at the middle and somebody advised us not to ski down but I had no idea where to go and he was really lovely to follow me but then he said you need to get a bus or a taxi and the queues for the buses and the taxis were unbelievable so it's like well why don't we walk and we may get a bus or a taxi or something so we started walking and we ended up walking the whole way back which was about I don't know, it felt like about 40 minutes because we're the far end of town from where we were. And um, I was carrying Archie and my skis and Archie was carrying Gus's skis and Gussie carried all the poles. And we just trundled back. We were going to stop at a bar and have a drink. But actually, I, just th I think we all just wanted to get back and have a swim in the pool. I've just been in the steam room, which was really, really lovely but I'm not quite, not very good with the rules about no costumes. I just can't take mine off. I just can't do it. I'm too, I'm too British and nobody wants to see what's underneath. So 
I'd broken those rules. But um, I just had a quick dip in the pool. But actually, I, I thought it was a bit cold. <laughs> I need to go and have a hot bath. Wash my hair. We had such a big kind of late lunch. I think this evening we're just going to have a little wander into town and maybe have a crepe or something. I'm actually feeling really, really full. It was the most delicious lunch, Italian and um, huge pizza. I don't know. You didn't think I to be honest. I feel like a glass of wine and a really early night. I think we're asleep by about 9.30 last night and we didn't get up till 7, so that was really, really blissful. And actually, it's just lovely going to bed pretty early with the children. I haven't even got my book out of my hand luggage case yet, and I think it's probably going to stay in there all week. Arch is just really keen to ski, ski, ski. And that's why we're here. So to be honest, let's make the most of it. It's so lovely that they are so keen. And actually having had four years off, they haven't forgotten. They've still got the moves, which is really, really exciting. Anyway, enough rambling from me. I will um, chat to you again later. Everyone is in the outdoor part of the pool, which is there. So I thought I'd just show you quickly. But it's so lovely having this area. I'm not sure who that is, I think. That's Coco. Oh, there's that. <laughs> this coming. Archie has been daring Gus to go in the snow and then jump in this pool, which I think is pretty mean, and he's done it too. On my Instagram, I did a skiing Q&A that I would answer um, in this week's video. So the first question was, does your knee hurt? I have got the most amazing knee support on, which I always ski with and have done since my accident. It also keeps my knee warm, which I think is quite important because when your joints get cold, particularly when you've broken bones, they can hurt. And I just feel like I have... Um, amazing support with it. It's a really, really great knee support. And I actually didn't put it on yesterday morning and I realized I hadn't put it on and I came back to the hotel. I actually won't ski without it. I just think it's asking for trouble. And so my knee is, um, it doesn't hurt when it's in, in my knee support. I do, well, we've had a few epic walks in ski boots and I did slightly feel it last night. It was a little bit sore, but it's not, it's not too bad at all. And I don't want my accident to stop me doing things I love, riding and skiing and all of those things. I'm really lucky that I still can do them. So actually I'm gonna make the most of it and while well, I can ski as much as possible and enjoy it, but being sensible. How old were your children when they first learned to ski? Arch was four and Coco and Gussie were both three um, when, we, when we first went. And I just feel the younger you start them, the better, to be honest, because then it just becomes like second nature. They don't have the fear factor. I know when you learn to ski when you're older, it's far, far more terrifying. But the children are really good skiers, and that's, I think, because we started them young. Although we've had four years off with no skiing, they've picked it back up so so quickly within like well instantly i mean the first run they were they were off and they were they were competent and so i think the younger the better to be honest if you can do it it was quite challenging that first time we went with the three children gussie was in kids club so we went with mark warner we went to the plan that time and it was quite challenging with three tiny children but we did it and um and it, and it worked. And so we just then actually went with Mark Warner year after year. We then went to Le Des Alpes because ski school met in front of the hotel. So there was no kind of schlepping around with them. It was so unbelievably convenient. And yes, the younger, the better. The next question was ski goggles. Um, where can I get them that don't cost an absolute fortune? I like the brand Smith. And I'll link these in the description of this video. Smith and I think Bolle, B-O-L-L-E, acute. Um, those are both really good brands and they're not that expensive. There's a huge variation of price point between like 30 and 130. And I think something kind of middle of the road, I've had my ski goggles, I mean, it must be 10 years, maybe even longer. And if you look after them, they'll last and you'll have them for years. So it's worth um, getting a fairly decent pair of goggles, um, is my advice. Where would you recommend for absolute beginners? That is a really, really hard question because 
every ski resort kind of has its pros and cons. Like the skiing here in Verbier is amazing, but to be honest, it's a little bit of a schlep to get up to the mountain. I mean, it's not that big a deal, but compared to some places we've stayed, which is ski in, ski out. I mean, you literally come out of the boot room and you ski. And I think if you're going for, if you're going as an absolute beginner, you want to do your research into the resort. So it's not, you know, you don't have to get buses and you don't have to walk for miles in ski gear because unless you're used to it, it's pretty awkward and pretty uncomfortable. Um, so I think, you know, do your research into resorts, but every resort has a good area for beginners. I mean, size, um, not a competent skier, and he's having a really lovely time here, and there's lots of different pieces for him. And I think our hotel is slightly out on the edge of town. If you're in the center of Zermatt, it's much easier to get up the mountain quickly, whereas we, we found um, we need to get like a little taxi to get up there and then I haven't been so successful in getting taxis back so we've ended up walking which um, isn't the most comfortable thing and you end up in a bit of a sweaty mess but I think you know just do your research we went to Le Plain in France um, for the first time the children ever skied which worked pretty well also Le Deux Alpes which we found so convenient we went with Mark Warner and I think we went about five times to the same resort because of its convenience. And um, we met a wonderful, wonderful instructor, Titoin, who is still friends with us. And so, and he lived in um, Le Deux Alpes. He's now in Vancouver, sadly. Um, but that just worked so well for us when the children were tiny. Just back from a day's skiing and the children in swimming pool. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to answer a few more questions. So one of them was, I'm in the market for a new ski jacket. Where's yours from? This is um, Bogner, B-O-N-G-E-R. Um, and it's far and ice. I bought it, gosh, probably about five or six years ago. And I love it. And I wear it with um, navy salopettes. So um, yeah, that is my ski jacket. And it was expensive, but I know that I'm going to have years of wear out of it. So I think it's worth investing if you're a keen skier in some good gear that will last you a long time. Did you go, grow up skiing and are there any ski resorts in England? I did grow up skiing. My dad was a very keen skier. Mum was quite late to skiing. So she, although she was a beautiful skier, she was quite nervous. But um, yes, I did grow up skiing. And no, there aren't any ski, ski runs in England. There are in Scotland. We've skied in Scotland. And when the snow's good, it's quite fun skiing up there. I'm interested in your opinion about self-catering the um, hotels. I think self-catering is great and we've done it, but you've got to go and buy the food, cook the food, wash up, all of that jazz. And if you're on holiday, I think um, a hotel is a little bit more of a spoiling option but it is cheaper often to do self-catering. So, you know, either or, it depends whether you want to kind of be spoiled and not have to cook and wash up, which personally, when I'm on holiday, I like that option. But self-catering is a great option as well, particularly if there's a group of you and you can share the cooking. Um, we've done that, we went with some great friends and, you know, one day it was her and the other day it was me and that worked really well too. So it just depends what kind of holiday you're looking for. But if you're looking to cut the costs, self-catering is a great way to do that. Best and favorite places that you have skied? Oh, it's such a tough one because there's so much um, to choose from. We've skied in America, we skied in Aspen pre-children. I was actually pregnant with Archie and that was the most incredible experience. That was wonderful. I love the French Alps, I love Austria. This is the first time I've skied with the children in Switzerland and we're having a wonderful time. Although it's a little bit of a schlep up the mountain um it's worth it when you're up there so it's really really hard to say i think as a teenager val d'azare was just awesome and i went quite a few times with a group of friends and that was a lot of fun so i don't know it's a really really tough one do you have a ski instructor or are you happy with the red runs 
I'm happy with the red runs, I'm happy with the black runs, I'm happy off piste, but I think it's always a good idea to have an instructor because you can always learn new things. You can always work on your technique, your style, and you know, pick up tips. If you're doing, you know, picking up bad habits, they can just correct that. So I think, um, I think it's a good idea, particularly when you're new to an area, to have an instructor and they can tell you sort of the best places to go. They can give you loads of advice, loads of info, and just correct um, any bad habits that you may have picked up along the way. And I think for the children, it's really, really important to have lessons. Mine did ski school for years. We haven't done ski school here, but we have got an instructor every day. We've either got a morning or an afternoon session. She'll either go with Simon or she'll come with us and the children, you know, it's sort of mix, mix and match. And that for us works really well. How old um, is too old to learn to ski? And can I learn to ski with my children? Absolutely you can. And Sai's basically done that. He skied as a child up in Scotland, um, in the Cairngorms. And then he didn't ski for many, many years until we got together and I was quite keen to continue skiing. So I said, come on, you've, you've got to do this. And so he's basically learned with the children, um, although they are far better than he is. He's a jolly good sport. But I think you're never too old to learn. And I think Sai is a testament to that, to be honest. I mean, he was in his, in his mid forties when he took up skiing um, properly. So go for it. But the younger, the better, to be honest. And I think starting, starting as a child does make it so much easier. Is it difficult to get back into skiing after your knee injury? No, to be honest. Um, so I was a bit crazy. I skied um, between operations. I had sort of pretty much a year of operations and I was sort of on crutches when I, <laughs> when I skied, which was really, really crazy. But I knew that a week after we got back from our ski holiday, I was having an operation to clean up the cartilage and to take the metal out of my leg. And the surgeon said to me, go just to be sensible. So that year I did take things really, really sort of slowly and really cautiously, but gosh, the freedom and feeling the wind in my face was just amazing. And to be honest, it kept me going. I love skiing and I love the mountains. So nothing's going to stop me, to be honest. The hair is still doing crazy things, but at least it's not static anymore. I'm just having a little glass of wine before we go out for dinner. Somebody asked me about the apres ski and whether it was good here. I said, I've got no idea. We're in bed at the same time as the children about 9, 9.30 every night, which actually is what I needed. Just a chance to kind of recharge, rest and hopefully come home feeling a little bit reinvigorated, reinvigorated, I think is the word. I actually haven't drunk much of this yet, but I'm gonna have a sip now. Mm, seriously good. That's the first bottle that I've had. Um, it's still going, so not much of a big drinker. But um, I really hope that you've enjoyed this vlog. It's been really fun bringing you on our skiing holiday and answering your questions. Now I have got a batch cookery course, which is starting on the 28th of February. So I am teaching you all about batch cooking, filling your freezer, doing things in advance, making life easier, because that's what Ask Charlie is all about. So I will leave the details to the course in the description of this video. So if you'd like more info, you can click on the link and read all about that. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you all so much for your lovely comments, your lovely support, and um, wishing you a really, really happy weekend, a great week ahead, and I will see you again back in the UK 
next Friday. Lots of love to you all. Bye.